the biggest challenge of my life. You know, it's something special, and it's known worldwide. In the same place where you can be with people that could be leading the world, you are also with people that could be professional athletes and Olympians. And so for me, uh, it was really, truly getting the best of both worlds. Just the opportunity to be able to walk around and say you're a brewer, I think it goes a long way in this world. When I look back, and I see the impact that it had on me and now going forward, the relationships that I've been so fortunate to, uh, to cultivate and to have and establish because of my ties to UCLA are, are endless and I'm forever grateful. You got an alumni base that will uh, take care of you and, and, and help you out for the rest of your life and it's, it's connected throughout the world. The opportunity to come to UCLA is so special. All the people I've met, I've met the most amazing people that really are in my corner. I have never regretted at any point um, attending UCLA. Our goal at Westcom is to make sure we look out for our members' best interest. I think it's great that you two have been saving for retirement. However, I am a bit concerned that you're highly leveraged in one specific industry. Are there any other areas that you might be interested in? <laughs> I understand that you two really like honey. However, there must be something else that you're interested in. We try to make sure we guide our members as best as we can. But at the end of the day, it really is their call. How about the financial sector or the tech sector?
Uh, they're the school that made it to the gym intact. Long Beach State could not, and that's why the Bruins have played only two games so far instead of three. Well, I'm happy that they're, they're everything is okay and they're going to play this game. 29, 29 minutes left until tip-off. Tip um, I'm, I'm excited, excited to, to see the Bruins play the third game, game here. I just, I just realized, by the way, Mark, Marquette, Marquette, that last check is not located, located in California, so there will be a Milwaukee-based <laughs> school on the way in here in about, uh, wow, just eight days. So a few days ago in San Diego, not a well-played game, but a riveting game, the Bruins and Pepperdine. And so many times, Tracy, thought the Bruins were dead and buried. And just as many times, he thought the Bruins had it all sewn up. And those two feelings repeatedly just kind of toggled back and forth within a few seconds of each other. It wasn't a dramatic, incredible game that swung back and forth because of great plays and heroic moments. I think that pendulum swung mostly because of some poor decisions and bad shots and silly fouls and missed free throws. But then, bam, you'd see a few good shots. And, and at bottom for UCLA, when you don't have two of your starters all game and maybe your most important starter fouls out, that's a really nice accomplishment accomplishment to get that win. That's one of those games where you get the win and you get out of there. I mean, because <laughs> Pepperdine, you know, people underestimate them. They are a good team. If they didn't have St. Mary's and Gonzaga in their league, they would win the league. Um, they're, they're a solid team. It was a, definitely a good win, a, another good test for the, for the Bruins, um, and they happened to pass that test. Jaime Jaquez Jr., who has cut his hair, by the way, almost unrecognizable now compared <laughs> to, the, to the weekend, he clanked three out of four free throws that would have won the game, and he was set to be the GOAT, but then he, he made the huge offensive rebound off his last miss, and he was a hero. And I'm sorry, if you play every second of a 55-minute basketball game, you deserve some applause as well as a very long nap. Well, I mean, that rebound was huge. Uh, that was the difference between winning and losing, and... It was just a matter. It didn't matter about the 55 seconds. What mattered was he wanted it, and he went and got it. He knew it was off, and the only way that they were going to win is if he stepped in the lane and got that offensive rebound. Chris Smith, meantime, 51, almost 52 minutes played, 26 points, 12 boards to reestablish himself a bit. The stealth star of that game, I thought, might have been Jules Bernard, who found something after halftime. He looked out of sync and tentative against San Diego State. And for pretty much the entire first half of that one against Pepperdine. But by the end of it, partner, he had 21 points. He had a big three in the third overtime. And you know it's a weird game when you're rooting for Bernard to start driving to the basket. But, but once he did, he seemed to find his rhythm. What I liked about Bernard that game was he was not thirsty. He didn't come out and just try to take the bull by the horn, so to speak. He let the game come to him. He took advantage of mismatches. He shot shots when he was wide open. He attacked when he had a weaker defender. He played smarter. That was his best game that I've seen him play where he wasn't thirsty. It was a three-overtime survival to get to 1-1. One and one. The chance to get to 2-1 and one presents itself tonight against the school. The Bruins are 4-0 and a lifetime against, playing them tonight for the first time since the late 1970s. And it's a reconfigured Pauley Pavilion, socially distant. Uh, Tracy and I are six feet apart, got the masks working. Uh, we are not courtside anymore. We're about two-thirds of the way up. But uh, that's just the way it goes, and we're happy to be here looking at the cardboard cutouts to the left of us. Everybody from Barack Obama to Henry Winkler sitting in that first row, and, and we are very thrilled to be here for some basketball for you tonight. This is Bruins Basketball from Learfield IMG College. At Westcom Credit Union, the official banking partner of UCLA Athletics, members come first in everything we do. Through lower loan rates, higher savings yields, reduced fees, and a robust network of branches, ATMs, and mobile banking applications. Learn all about the Westcom difference at UCLA. The Bruins won 88 games and did what no team had done before. At center, the player of the year, if not all time. Phoenix Diva, the official communications partner of the Pac-12, we're connecting champions on the field and in the office. Next Diva provides cloud phone service to hundreds of thousands of companies, helping great teams communicate and collaborate. This holiday season, Pac-12 fans can enjoy the 30% off with Next Diva, the phone service of champions. Connect your champions today. Visit nextdiva.com. That's N-E-X-T-I-V-A.com. Subject to eligibility, terms and conditions apply. You are listening to Bruins Basketball. Lobbing down low. And a weird rattling two-hand jam. On the UCLA Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. 
Though this basketball season may look a little different, Bruins fans, you can still grab an ice-cold, refreshing Dos Equis for tip-off. You can cheer on the blue and gold from anywhere. So whether you're watching from home or the bar, remember to pick up a smooth, refreshing cerveza for game day. Dos Equis, proud sponsor of UCLA Athletics. Enjoy Dos Equis responsibly. Imported by Cervezas Mexicanas, White Plains, New York. For generations, the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians has called the Inland Empire home, and we take pride in supporting our neighbors and the world around us. As one of the largest employers in the area, we are committed to the prosperity of our community. That's why we work to support many important local causes. Throughout today's challenges and tomorrow's possibilities, our tribe will always be here for this community, honoring our history, celebrating our culture, building a brighter future for us all. Well, UCLA installed as close to a 20-point favorite tonight in the rescheduled home opener, but as Mick Conan would be the first to tell you, don't believe the hype. The Seattle Redhawks, coached by Jim Hayford, do two things very well. They chuck up three balls and they grab offensive rebounds, and teams like that have come in here as underdogs recently, given UCLA everything it can handle. So let's drill down a little deeper, Tracy. Seattle's already played four games, although one was against an NAIA school no one's ever heard of. Tossed that one, and still their resume is strong. Beat Air Force by 18, one on the road against the University of Portland by 12. They just lost last time out to CSUN, but a 3 and one start gets your attention. It gets your attention, but then the loss to CSUN also gets my attention. So it's letting me know that, okay, there might be a little something here to worry about, but then again, it might be fool's gold. Hmm. So um, what the Bruins have to do is concentrate on themselves this game. Get better. Uh, defend your home court and play hard. If you do that, you should win this basketball game. Seattle plays in what used to be a jewel of a conference, the WAC, but that league is now Dixie State, UT Rio Grande Valley, Cal Baptist, and Chicago State. So where have you gone running Rebels of UNLV? Kind of an unrecognizable goulash of a conference in which Seattle's picked to finish mid-pack. Their best players are probably a 6'6 swingman named Riley Grigsby, whose dad was part of a Sweet 16 team at Cal a generation ago, and a little waterbug guard named named Darian Trammell. They're each averaging 18.3 a game, Tracy, and it makes a third straight time that Tiger Campbell has to defend a shifty, diminutive point guard. We've already seen Terrell Gomez from San Diego State, Colby Ross from Pepperdine, and now here's a third wave crashing onto Tiger's Beach in Trammell. Well, that, that's going to be every night for Tiger Campbell. The, the point guard is probably the toughest position to defend because you're the head of the snake. you got to keep people in front of you at the beginning of the offense. If there's a blow by, then it breaks the whole defense down. So his his troubles is every game. He's got to be ready to defend. Um, but you mentioned, you know, a couple guys. I mean, Grigsby. You know, are you talking about uh, uh, Al Grigsby? Alfred dad? Grigsby. Yep. I played against. Him I dad. figured you did. And and my cousin played with him. So I mean, it's good to see, you know, people that you played against their kids. Are, are continuing on with the family tradition and, and, and uh, getting out there and competing. So, yeah, he's averaging 18 points a game, four rebounds, and, you know, he's uh, shooting 49% from the floor and 42 from three. And he's one of the very few holdovers. You know, Pepperdine and San Diego State had a lot of returning scores, but there are 10 new faces from last year on the Seattle roster. Uh, Terrell Brown was their glue guy last year. He's transferred to Arizona. They've had three guys transfer in from City College of San Francisco. They've brought in uh, Deron Henson from Washington State, uh, Jared Perry from Northridge. So there's some talent here. UCLA, though, they've got the stability and a lot more talent. Kind of the, the counterpoint to this leftover stew that Seattle has creatively assembled. UCLA returning all five starters. And as we've discussed, tonight they get Jalen Hill back in gear. He missed the first two games because of a wonky knee. So I like that, right? You've got Cody Riley and Jalen Hill now in the paint. Well, now the Bruins get some rim protection back now uh, because he's the high flyer. He's the guy that's going to block shots and grab a few extra rebounds. So when you get that back, that takes a lot of pressure off of Cody Riley as well on the inside, providing that, that defensive, that interior defense. So uh, and welcome back, Jalen Hill. 
up against a Seattle University team that uh, obviously is from Seattle. They're right there on Capitol Hill. And if you know only one thing about their history athletically, it is the school where the great Elgin Baylor started yep. back in the, the late 1950s, one of the great Lakers of all time. Uh, and then 22 years as the GM of the Clippers cross town, 11-time All-Star, first ballot Hall of Famer. And a fair question is, how did he end up at the University of Seattle. Well, the story goes that a friend had first arranged a scholarship at the College of Idaho, where he was going to play football as well. But that school dismissed the head basketball coach, restricted scholarships. So a Seattle car dealer steps in, says, come on and play for Westside Ford, an AAU team in Seattle. We'll get you established. And yada, 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 he plays at Seattle University, scores a 61 points for the Lakers against the Celtics in an NBA Finals game not too much later. I'll tell you what, he's one of the greats, and... And, you know, you look back at careers and you wonder how certain people got to where they are. It was destined for him to be there. It was destined for him to be in the NBA and get that 61-point game. Talent always wins over. They will find you wherever. And you know what, partner, not to bring the room down, but since we're talking legends, we need to yeah. stop down and say a few words about the passing of Rafer Johnson. Just unspeakably sad news coming down yesterday. Passed away at his home in Sherman Oaks. I only had the pleasure of meeting him once, but it was something I'll never forget. You talk about a, a larger-than-life renaissance man, Olympic decathlon winner, member of John Wooden's basketball team for a year as well. Yes, when I first saw... Rayford Johnson. I was a kid in sixth grade, seventh grade at Elliott Junior High School in Pasadena. We were, we had a film, and it was like a it was a film of the decathlon, and it was back in ancient uh, Athens type deal. And he was on there, and and going through many different uh, events. And it was it was really cool to see that. And then later on, fast forward. I go to school with Jenny Johnson here. Sure. She was on the volleyball team when I was here. I got to know Josh, his son, and Betsy, his wife. And, and, and to get to know him, he was such a good mentor, a great person, a phenomenal father, a great Bruin. Um, I, I, I'm going to miss um, Bruin events where I come up and, and sit with him and talk to him for a minute and give him a hug. I mean, such a great man uh, is now gone, and I'm, I'm going to miss him, that's for sure. Uh, sadly passed at the age of 86. And when we come back, we'll get Mick Cronin's thoughts on Rayford Johnson and, then, of course, get his take on the game tonight. That's coming up after a scoreboard update with Pete McCarthy. That's next. It's Bruins Basketball, presented by... Learfield IMG College. Hey, UCLA fans. Have you heard what the helpful SoCal Honda dealers have been up to lately? Bruins don't have thumbs, so we don't have thumbs. Fours up. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, U, C, L-A, U-C-L-A, fight, fight, fight. Do chop, do do chop, do do do. Go Bruins! Wait, why was that so cute? Well, we're here in Las Vegas right now, T-Mobile Arena, and this is not the conversation I thought we would be having, but the Pac-12 has suspended and canceled not only the Pac-12 men's basketball tournament, but all spring sports moving forward for the foreseeable future. <laughs> Thank you.
Kansas right now. Bruins getting ready to take on Seattle University. And Mick, before we get into that and what happened and didn't happen this past Monday, uh, obviously the news of Rafer Johnson's passing, I know, is very much on your mind and the, the Bruins community. Uh, what can you tell us about, about Rafer and what you knew of him? Well, when I first got to meet Rafer, not long after I got the job, Josh, our first formal player event, uh, I then went home and studied about uh, his life and his accomplishments, uh, many of them before I was born. So I had to read up on them and uh, then couldn't wait to tell uh, my, my daughter, Sammy, about who I met. And then having him at my home for a uh, former player event uh, was just unbelievable. I have the picture up in my house. Uh, that we took and, and he's front and center. Uh, just the, the presence he had, just, you know, even in, in the years where I got to meet him towards the end, he, uh, he's just, you can tell you're around somebody. It's a, a, a living legend. You know, you're not, you're not around people like that, that often in your life. When you say this guy's really like one of the special people that ever walked the earth because of the, he transcended uh, color lines and he did it with such class and dignity and the accomplishments. Uh, not, not, not least among them being president of the student body here at UCLA. Yeah, that's right. Uh, very well said. And, and I, I need it's a weird transition, but I do want to ask you about the game tonight. And, and I guess kind of tied into that, Mick, uh, the fact that you guys didn't play on Monday. Is that in a weird way an okay thing? Because you maybe needed some more rest, or did you really want to get out there and just get going again? These guys want to play, Josh. Yeah, we're really disappointed. You know, uh, I made sure I rested them Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we did most of our prep on Monday. We did our pre-practice, uh, pre-game practice. Uh, and found out the uh, that we weren't going to play. Uh, the decision was made after while the guys were actually eating a pre-game meal. So, hey, these guys want to play games. So, you know, they're young. They want to they want to lace them up, and play some games. They've had enough of practice and here tell them to get in a defensive stance. So, <laughs> looking forward to to tonight. Uh, you know, tonight's game and knock on wood, getting as many in as they can. So tell me about the Seattle team a little bit. I know they've had a lot of turnover, but it looks like they got some talent. Well, they're plus 26 on the offensive glass in four games, uh, and they don't turn the ball over. And if you look back uh, to last year, uh, they don't turn the ball over. They take care of the basketball. They're very, uh, very good in that department, meaning they, so they get a lot of shots off, and Josh, they shoot a lot of threes. So the three-point shot's the great equalizer. So uh, that, it, that uh, can make up for their lack of size on the front line. So they got solid guard play. Uh, it, it, so Tramel's good with the ball. Grigsby's a really good one-on-one -on -one player for them. And so they, they, they got enough guys that can hurt us if we're not ready. You mentioned size, and you get Jalen Hill back tonight. What are your expectations? How long can he play? Will there be rust to kind of kick off? Well, I'm concerned about, uh, you know, that he hasn't had a ton of reps. Um, so from an offensive standpoint. I don't worry about Jalen defensively. He, he, you know, he's a great athlete and he's got good instincts. Um, concerned about his, just, just getting him to, and, and really not just because he's been out, Josh. I, I, I want him to improve offensively. You know, he's got to cut down on his turnovers, uh, but he has great vision as a passer, but he's got to make sure before he passes. Uh, he tends to let it go as soon as he sees you. He's got to make sure nobody's going to deflect his pass. And I want to get him to become a better finisher, a la Cody Riley, around the rim. So it's we've been working on, uh, and, and you know I, I love his unselfishness. But when he's got that ball in the paint, I need him to to be stronger and get the ball in the hole and get himself to the foul line because he's a very good free throw shooter. He really improved last year. Real quick, Coach, how close is Johnny Juzang to getting out there and helping you? I think he's close. Uh, you know, we're, we, there's no announcement when he'll play this day, that day. Uh, he's doing more every day. He's out of his boot. So uh, it's just a matter of making sure he's pain free. Uh, so we don't we, we know that uh, he's playing without uh, any restrictions and got to always try to do the right thing by the player. And that's what we're doing with Johnny. But, uh, you know, I know he's raring to go. So, uh, you know, hopefully it's sooner than later. All right, go get him tonight. We'll see you through the magic of Zoom afterwards. Appreciate it very much. All right, buddy. Thanks, Josh. All right, that's Mick Cronin. Got more coming up right after this. Bruins basketball from Learfield IMG College. Hey there, Bruin fans. We're all so sad that you can't be here with us in person, but be sure to keep up that energy from home to support your Bruins.